Hello and welcome to Infinity. Let's have a look at this picture for a kind of a slightly longer edit. And uh, we're in raw mode here, so we're in the develop persona. So let's straight out the camera. The red here in the sun is because I've got the clipping here, so I turn those off. It's there so I can see where it's it's burned, but usually the sun's okay. However, what I'm going to do is go down to shadows and highlights. Go down to the highlights here and watch around the sun here as I pull the highlights down. You can see there the starburst effect is appearing a lot more and I got that simply by using a narrow aperture. So now then to bring things back a little bit and turn exposure up. Don't have to go all the way just to lighten things up a bit and push the histogram out so that I can pull it back again with the black point. Again I don't have to go all the way just enough so I'm getting some contrast in here. Maybe the brightness up a little bit and contrast here, yeah, put a bit more so contrast in that, so that darkens the bridge. Maybe a little bit more lightness in there. Okay, that'll do. Let's go to the develop. Right, so now we want to do is straighten up this bridge. A reason to do that is straight lines are calm, horizontal lines are calm. Whereas diagonal lines I have a bit more tension in them. And this probably was taken with a wide angle, which did distort it a bit. And so on. So let's go to the warp tool here. So if you can't see it, right click mesh warp tool. And we'll put on view and show grid so we can see where the levels are. And we'll just drag this down here until we get something a bit more level. So round about there. Maybe I need to pull that up a little bit. There you go, that will do. These things are still tilting here, so actually I'm going to drag that sideways a little bit there. From that top line to just straighten up those bridge pillars here. That'll do. So I'll apply that. And take the view and grid off. So what else do I want to do? I want to keep this here, but I'm going to start cropping it first of all to try and get the picture that I want to get. And I don't need that much sky up there, so I'll bring this down a bit. I'll bring this up here, don't need all that. So I'll leave the horizon there roughly on the thirds. And don't need all that to the right. That doesn't tell much of a story, so I'll bring this over here and yeah, like that. I don't want the sun to be in the middle and I want to keep the bridge there. I'll apply that there. The bit is tilting off about there, isn't it? So let's go back to the mesh warp and I'm going to put a point here and see if I can just kind of bring this down a bit here. Yeah, just to level that off. That'll do. There you go, that's gone a bit much straighter now. OK, let's see what else we can start doing now. How about if I put a bit of colour into the sun? So I'm going to try recolouring this in slightly different ways. So it's a little bit unnatural, so it's a little bit fantasy, maybe relaxing. I don't know. Actually, before I do that, I can see some dust spots. So I want to pull them out first, so I go to Live Filters and Unsharp. And just turn the radius and the factor right up. So that'll show me where the spots are. Then I go to the background here and here, right click on that and the in painting brush. And then I just paint over these here where there are spots. I can click on them. I can keep walking, you know, clicking, and it'll catch up with me eventually. I can get rid of bits, even little bits I don't want. There. Don't want to keep that in there. I'm going to click on that. No, I don't like that. That's not doing that quite properly. I'll leave it there. There's a little bit of a big one up there. What else? They start getting faint. There's a point at which you want to see them in the picture. So that'll do. I'll keep that. So I can delete the way that I'm sharp there. So anything else I can still see, there's a couple in here. 
Nope, that's on my screen. <laughs> there we go. Right. So what to do now? Yeah, let's color the sun. So I'm going to go to adjustments here and go to selective color because selective color is a good way of coloring whites and blacks for that matter. So I'm going to go to color here down to whites and now I'm going to want to be able to color this. If I make this more yellow, if I turn it up, things get a bit more yellow here, but the white isn't being affected. So I want to take off the relative here. And there we go. Now I'm getting some yellow into that. And I want a bit of red in here. This is so selective color. This is red, green and blue, but backwards. So if I want more red, I take the cyan down. So do then that, yeah, that puts it a bit more orange into the light areas there and it makes it a little bit more kind of dynamic like that. So is that colour okay? That'll do. I can always come back to it because it's a non-destructive adjustment. So I'm going to put a bit of all fancy colours on now. So I'm going to put gradients over the sky and the sea here. But I'm going to do it using rectangles because then I can adjust them later. So if you put an adjustment, uh, a gradient on a on a pixel layer, you can't go back and rechange it later. But if you do it with a rectangle, you can. So it's one there and one up here. And let it snap down there. Got the snapping tool on here so they just meet together quite nicely. So now I can get to the gradient tool and I'm selecting the top rectangle there which is the sky and I just drag down here. The bottom one there I'm going to make opaque so I, oh sorry transparent so I just pull that over there so this is you can see through that and the top um what color that should I make that a bit of a rose color. For rose color there's lots of red there's a bit of blue and there's no green. So you got this will do this. You can also pick it out from somewhere in here, just on this side here. Then we don't want that much, so we're going to do a soft light so it blends in a bit more. And that is that enough actually? Actually, do I need a bit more of that? Maybe I'll turn that up to a an overlay. Oh, I know why. This one here I haven't got to the right colour. So I'm colouring the rectangle itself rather than the gradient. So let's try that again. So I have to select that end, turn up the red, turn down the green and bring the blue into the middle. There we go. That's way too much isn't it? Now we put it onto a soft light which softens it and it also doesn't interfere with the sun so much. Now I can drag this up and down to get how much of that is in there and then just take down a pasty to where it's got and it's sort of interacting a bit better with the sky there. I can always come back to it. So I'll go down to the bottom one here and I'll do one here. So the top one there, click on that, set that back to zero. So that is transparent. Change the blend mode again here to soft light and then click on the bottom one here and set that to... Well I can literally play with the colours here but I'm going to be something opposite the rose. So it's going to be it's in the colour wheel. It's going to be around the cyan sort of colour there. Maybe a little bit more green in it so... And then I can turn down the opacity so that it just comes in a bit more. So see we're getting a bit of fantasy sort of colours. We can always go back and turn them down a bit. And hmm, if I'm going to click and shift click that so I've got both of these together. Control G for groups and I can put a mask on that. On one mask there. There we go in that group. So I've got that as a mask. 
and I can paint on that mask so I can maybe paint a little bit in the centre here so I can remove those things there. So I'll go to a paintbrush, what's the opacity there? Yeah, around about 20%, soft brush, soft, soft brush. And just kind of like paint around here. Wait for it to catch up because that tends to take a bit of time. So I'm painting black onto that mask. If I'm not sure, I'll click that. You can see there where I painted the grey. If I put a bit more on like that there, sometimes it's better to do it like this. You can actually see where it is. And I go back out there and I'm taking that down a bit more. Still make sure I've got the mask itself selected, not the group. Just take that out a little bit. OK, that will do. What I can do as well is I can take, go to the group and I can adjust the overall opacity so the effects of both those. I want a bit, bit of colour in here so that looks kind of interesting. OK, that will do and let's just finish off with a vignette. So I'll put a vignette above here. So I'll just use the basic ones. So I've got a live filters and vignette. And first thing do, turn down the exposure so you can see where it is. Change the shape to the shape you want. So if you want a, something like oval here, so it matches into the picture size. Turn up the, turn the hardness, so I've got it super soft. And then scale it out so it's just going to kind of clip the corners and then really adjust the exposure. So it's just... I mean, a little effect, you can hardly notice it, but if you turn it on and off, you can see the effect. So it's just like a subtle effect. So there we go. It's a little bit, you know, brightly coloured. If you find this sort of thing a bit too much, you can affect the whole thing quite quickly um, by going to the group where that colouring was done. And I could, on there, say put in an HSL and uh, that's appeared above the group of course so I'm going to drag it down so it's a vertical line there so it's in the group in fact I can drag it down so it's actually above those here horizontally so it's the same level as those so I had a horizontal blue line there and then I just turn down the saturation there it's another way that I can work within that group could have turned down the opacity as well, but it just has just slightly different effect. Right, I'm going to leave it like that. So I hope that was interesting and thank you very much for watching.